Bruchem Aboyim. Welcome to our home. Thank you for coming. So, this week, on my thoughts, I'd like to examine the question, can we slow down time? You know, time in reality is constant. A minute is always 60 seconds. An hour is always 60 minutes. And a day is always 24 hours. Yet somehow, time is not always constant. It is relative. Relative to how we perceive the minute, the hour, or the day. People often use the phrase that time flies. Of course, time doesn't actually fly. But somehow we many times perceive that our time is passing us by very quickly. There is a misconception that time moves slower when you are young and then somehow, as you get older, time moves much more quickly. I believe that this statement is incorrect. Age. Age is not the determining factor as to whether time is perceived as moving quickly or slowly. I believe that the deciding factor may well depend upon how much or how little you enjoy, what it is that you are participating in in the moment. More than reality, happiness and misery are many times the product of our perception. So a young child who is attending school daily may find that their day moves very slowly. Yet somehow, when they're on vacation or a summer break, their time seems to move by very quickly. What's the difference? The actual time on the clock is identical in either case, and the only difference that exists really is their perception. When a child is preoccupied with the school year, they are compelled to do many things that they would rather not participate in, such as getting up early in the morning, spending time cooped up in classrooms, doing homework, taking tests, following rules imposed by teachers, dress codes, uh, the list goes on and on. No wonder that their time moves so slowly. However, during the summer break, well, when they are at home or at camp, it's all about recreation. Then somehow, the time seems to fly by. The summer is almost over, even before it began. So we can readily observe that it is not age that determines how we perceive time. It is more often than not what we are involved in at the moment that makes that determination. When we are participating in a project or an adventure that we truly enjoy, it seems as if the clock is running on steroids. However, when we are forced to attend or focus on something that we find boring or even worse, painful, it seems as if the clock is stuck and never seems to move. And if it does move, it moves like a tortoise. So my question is, why is it that we focus so much better on the negative than what, rather than we focus on the positive? Why is it that good times only visit, whereas the tough times that we experience in life more often than not become members of our household? I think that as crazy as it sounds, we actually pay more attention to pain that we do, that we experience, more than we do pleasure. The question that we must ask is, but why? Somehow the pleasure is easily forgotten or taken for granted. Whereas the pain? Huh, the pain is kept on the front burner. Pain demands our full attention. It doesn't wait for an invitation. Pleasure, on the other hand, is very polite. and enters only when and where it is invited. The question that we should ask ourselves is, why are we all so masochistic? Do we really enjoy pain so much more then we enjoy pleasure. So what's the secret of prolonging joy and diminishing pain and sorrow? Dovinamel of King David addresses this question in Tehillim in Psalm 34, 13. There he writes, Who is the man who desires life, loves his days so that he may see good? David then continues with this advice, Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from deceitful speech. And then he concludes his advice with the words, Keep away from evil and do good without hesitation. Seek out peace and pursue it. Governor Malik is suggesting that enjoying a long life and productive days are really a matter of choice. More often than not, they are connected 
with our speech and our perspective. One must be proactive, as it states in the psalm, Bake shalom feihu, seek out peace and pursue it. Pain and sorrow, as I mentioned, don't wait for an invitation. They don't wait for you to invite them in. They sneak in wherever they can. They make themselves right at home. They don't even knock. In fact, many times they just break down the door. It amazes me how accommodating we are to our pains mm -hmm. and sorrows. Instead of trying to just ignore them, well, we submit to their whims and wishes. In reality, they are a hot pot. That being the case, so why would we want to continue holding on to them? After all, they just continue to burn us. But yet many times, that is exactly what we do. If we truly focused on all the many blessings that we receive daily, well, there would be really very little time left for us to entertain any pain or sorrow. They would find it difficult to dominate our time and our attention. We need to devise strategies to distract our attention from negative thoughts and actions and focus more on those things that we enjoy. Even little things, you know, like holding a baby or listening to music or just socializing with good friends. A good friend of mine once told me what his mother always told him. Joy with a friend is doubled and sorrow is cut in half. Is pain really so much more powerful than pleasure? I believe that we have a tendency to take our good times for granted. What we need to do is train our minds, much like athletes train their bodies. We should attempt to always see the best in anything and everything that we experience in life. We must view our glass as half full, not half empty. We need to focus on the big picture and not let ourselves get caught up in the little details. You know, we take a lesson from Nachum Ish Gamzu who live with the motto, Gam Zula Tova, which means that everything that we experience in life is done for the best. We cannot give in to despondency. We must believe we must know with complete certainty. But the Torah teaches us that no evil comes from above. That being the case, we must conclude that even the most negative events that we experience in our lives contain within them a much greater blessing, albeit in a hidden fashion. You know, the Talmud in the Tractate of Brachos relates the story of Rabbi Akiva, who lived with the belief, called to Ovid Rachmana, Latab Ovid. Whatever the Holy One, blessed be he, does, is all for the good. The Talmud states that once Rabbi Akiva set out on a journey, he took with him a donkey to ride on, a candle to learn by, and a rooster to wake him up in the morning. He reached the town and asked to be given accommodations for the night. Well, sadly, he was refused hospitality to every door, every house that he approached. Having no other choice, he was forced to spend the night in an open field outside the outskirts of the town. During that night, well, a lion appeared and devoured his donkey. Soon after, a wild cat came and stole away his rooster, and then the wind began to blow until it extinguished his candle. His reaction to all of these seemingly negative events that occurred was called to Abed Rachmana, the Tab to Abed. Whatever the merciful one does is done for the best. It just so happened that during the night, a marauding army had come and captured the town. They had killed all the residents and plundered all their possessions. Had he had spent the night in the town, then he too would have suffered the same fate as those, res those who resided there. In addition, if the soldiers would have heard his donkey bray, his rooster crow, or had they had seen the light of the candle flicker, he would have shared the same fate as those residents of the town. In the morning, as he passed through the town, he articulated the words, called to Ovid Rachmana, the Tab Ovid. Whatever the merciful one does is done for the best. All of the events that occurred during the night which initially were perceived as being negative, were in reality exactly what saved his life. You know, I find it interesting that if you ask someone about their life, the stories that they tell you with pride are about those difficult challenges they were forced to face. With a sense of pride, they describe to you how they were able to overcome all of those obstacles and all the lessons that they learned from their experiences. Once we come to the realization of just how much we learn and grow from adversity, 
It should cause us to relook our approach to any so-called negative situations. We must train ourselves to find joy even during the most difficult of times. Why wait until after the fact when they become memories? Why not enjoy them in the moment? We should always remember that good judgment comes from experience and experience comes from bad judgment. The only way to slow down time is to be cognizant of time, stay in the moment. Not just when we are experiencing pain or misery, we must train ourselves to not take our blessings for granted. We need to stop, to look, and to listen. We all need to smell the roses. Pain forces us to stop and pay attention, whereas pleasure allows us the opportunity to continue on our path without acknowledging its presence. You know, it's amazing how concentrating on other people and identifying with their pains and difficulties or by putting ourselves into social situations will many times overshadow our pain and difficulties and allow us to experience all the many blessings that always exist in our lives. If one were to think about it logically, the more pain and discomfort that we experience, actually the more we should celebrate its absence and focus on the pleasures of life. Pleasure does not have to create anything new. It can exist in any situation as long as we no longer entertain any feelings of pain or misery. We need to develop strategies that slow time down. We need to make con a conscious effort that makes us appreciate each precious moment that passes in our lives. One way that I find productive is to glance at the clock from time to time. If you don't lose track of time, somehow makes everything seem just a little bit longer. Don't allow time to run. Slow it down. Focus on the positive. Approach life as you would an expensive bottle of wine. Enjoy its bouquet, its full-body taste, its smell and aroma. You sip the wine. You don't guzzle it down your throat. You allow it to linger on your palate. You know, we don't drink an expensive bottle of wine the same as we would a can of soda. In Hebrew, the word for time is zaman. The word is comprised of the same letters as the Hebrew word mazon, food. Much of our life is dominated by mazon, putting food on our table, making a living. That being the case, a person should try to find employment in a field that they enjoy. Even the time that we spend at work should not be wasted. We must find joy in everything and anything that we do. And then we must remember to stop, to look, and to listen, to acknowledge all the many blessings that we receive daily from our benevolent Father in heaven. We must approach our lives as a fine bottle of wine and not a can of soda. And with that, let us slow the time down by utilizing our time properly and hopefully helping to usher in the coming of Mashiach Zikano quickly and in our time. Again, thank you very much for attending. Uh, again, God should bless you and yours with all that's good. And um, again, stay safe, stay happy. Um, enjoy life. Again, try to celebrate, try to focus on the good. Uh, we'll, again, Shabbat Shalom. In a few seconds, we'll be starting another song that I wrote. Again, an original song in the next part of my lecture. Thank you very much for attending. God bless and be well.